Distinguished colleagues, I'm equally delighted to be given the opportunity to speak at this conference. However, I must uh, admit upfront that my presentation is only loosely related to Rosa Luxemburg. One point of reference is surely Rosa Luxemburg's skepticism towards bureaucratic organizations which tend to underestimate their members' common sense. Jetzt muss ich mal sehen, ob das hier funktioniert. Yes, this is from Must Strike, well known. I presented this to the head of the IG Metall and he was very amused, yes. <laughs> uh, the question in this regard is as to whether such tendencies still exist today. The second reference concerns the concept of capitalist Landnamen. Uh, it's different, uh, it's uh, uh, difficult to translate. It's not land grabbing, it's not enclosure, it's not um, uh, land appropriation, it's something in between, yes? So I use the, the German word uh, Landnahme. Rosa Luxemburg, in fact, never used the term Landnahme. She instead spoke of colonization. The term nevertheless captures the essence of uh, Luxemburg's theory of accumulation the fundamental assumption of which is that capitalism cannot reproduce exclusively from within. The expansive reproduction of capital requires the continuous occupation of non-capitalist milieus. Together with a team of researchers, I attempt to apply this idea to the constitution of the subject in contemporary capitalism. In this present context, I can only roughly outline this, this adaption. The new Landnahme is characterized by the tendency to extend a rationality essentially reduced to the principle of competition increasingly in all domains of society and its subjects. Capitalist Landnahme in, is, in its subjective dimension means that wage earners find themselves confronted with an all-pervasive entrepreneurial guiding image. Curiously, the self-definition of workers and employees seems to remain unaffected by this. Wherever wage earners act in, accord in accordance to those guiding images, this occurs on the basis of his an historically evolved consciousness, the functionality of which for a long time now has been denied by corporate management. It is precisely these, these sedimented layers of work consciousness which the protagonists of the new Landnahme perceive as an exterior that represent sub subjective sources of willful practices and attitudes critical of capitalism. However, they also serve as a subjective basis for special commitment and the identif identification with the workplace uh, or the comp company as a whole. To explain this view in more detail, I would like to present some empirical findings from several qualitative and quantitative studies that we conducted in, the, in medium-sized and large industrial enterprises, both in Eastern and Western Germany. The main study was conducted at a car manufacturer in south, southern Germany. You see the empirical basis, the data. Uh, it's the main, the main case. Uh, our key finding was workplace experience on the one hand and concepts of society held by wage workers on the other hand are increasingly drifting apart. A critical notion of society no longer finds a natural support in the microcosm of the workplace. On the contrary, the positive identification with the workplace and the company as a social space can lead to subjective attenuation of a critical view of society. We have condensed this observation in the brief formula good company, bad society. What this means uh, is illustrated by f four of our findings. I have to concentrate. Only four findings and not 10 or 12, yes. Yeah, so, excuse me, for, um, I beg your pardon for this. 
Uh, first finding. In the studied companies, the members of the core workforce tend to identify highly positively with the workplace, the plant, and with the company as a whole. Initially, we found this form of consciousness in East German companies in the optoelectronics industry and interpreted it as a kind of particular consciousness related to the tradition of being a foundation-owned firm. Despite partly harsh criticism of the top management, 75% of respondents identify strongly or very strongly with the company and two-thirds are proud to be a part of the company. Indeed, self-definition and corporate identity do vary between different types of firms and age groups. The socialize, socializational force of a company identity, the origins of which date back well beyond the era of the Eastern German Democratic Republic is nevertheless still surprisingly pre present. Um, we know today that this positive identification is far less widespread than we had originally anticipated. The same phenomenon we uh, encountered in the East German foundation-owned firm could also be observed, albeit in a different form, in the southern German car manufacturing company. More than 58% of the respondents feel that they are part of their regional company with all their heart. This is uh, partly true for another 25%, while only 13% do not develop this kind of identification. Uh, the identification with the small world of the company by no means represents a monistic form of consciousness that blurs the differences between the management hierarchy and the employees. The opposite can uh, also occur. Often the positive identification rests on tradition, value orientations, and commonly shared experiences, which sometimes leads to quite vehement criticism of the work situation of the management of the workplace or the entire company. Despite widespread uncertainty due to the experience of crisis, as we encounter particularly in the car manufacturing plant, real switching activities, wechsel activitäten, um, activities if you change from one firm to the other, um, are, are rare. Uh, the firm seems uh, to mean more than just a place of empl in employment. In times marked by the return of social inse insecurity, the various manifest manifestations of corporate identity always contain some sort of claim to social security, professionality of work, fair wages, and uh, social appreci appreciation. With regards to these claims, the workplace and possibly the entire company seem as the last remaining refuge, refuge of social security. By providing a permanent, more or less well-paid and somewhat interesting gainful employment, the company opens up opportunities to members of the core workforce that seem invaluable to them and which they are therefore prepared to fight a tooth and nail to defend. Um, this is even true as could be witnessed in the case of the Schlecker saleswoman if the, if the actual working conditions have been previously criticized as excessively demanding and unattractive. In this sense, the positive identification is not merely the result of a failed con consciousness belonging to the core workforce marks the social status that structures the respondents' microcosms. Second finding. No, let me look. Okay. I've never seen the PowerPoint before, so <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm ex excited and it's not, I think it's not a, that's not what I want. Um, because these are the third finding. Okay, there's, I missed something. Okay, I will do it without a uh, slide. Second finding, attitudes and um, convictions critical of capitalism are widespread. 
For the majority, a society marked by social dichotomy represents a bad society inadequate, in, inadequate uh, for the future. This hypothesis is based on statements concerning distributional justice, perceived social divisions, and the leg legitimation of the capitalist economic mode, which we presented in the questionnaires for employees from the previously mentioned East and West German industrial companies. The critical consciousness of society comprises three distinct dimensions. First, large man majorities of respondents in both East and West share the notion that they live in a society which is increasingly becoming polarized. Some 76% of the respondents in the Western car manufacturer agree or at least partly agree that all society consists of today is a top and a bottom while the companies in the East, this number is at 60%. Second, it is almost a collective verdict that social wealth could be distributed far more equitably. Some 74% of production-related workers and employees in the West and seven 79% uh, of respondents from the East agree fully or tendentially on this point. Third, as a consequence of the perceived divisions, the capitalist economy's basis of legitimation is crumbling. The statement that today's economic system is not viable in the long term is found to be true by at least relative majorities in both West uh, and East. 54% in, in uh, the West and 41% uh, in the East. What is striking is the high proportion of respondents that remain undeceded on this issue. 35% in West and 33% um, in the East. Um, we find the same tendency in the responses to the encounter question concerning the acceptance of the capitalists, capitalist rules of the game. Third finding, and now I need this. Third finding, members of the core workforce dissociate themselves not only from the top or from the, from the exterior, but also from the bottom. That is to say, from the unemployed and the precariously employed. Reacting spontaneously, they tend to exhibit exclusive solidarity. I also presented this to the heads of the IG Metall, and they were highly amused. Yeah. <laughs> Big discussion about this, yes. As we found, many respondents consider themselves to belong to a large group in society which is in social decline. This is precisely what causes the desire to dis distance the, uh, oneself from precariously employed or the long or and long-term unemployed people. Irrespective on the fact that a majority dis disapproves of uh, Hartz IV, some of it's the Hartz IV. It's I hope it's well known. Uh, it's um, what we call in German Grundsicherung, the basic income, but it's not, it's a, it's a basic income which stigmatized uh, the people uh, who are the recipients. Yeah, that's the problem. Um, some 45 of respondents from the car manufacturer nevertheless believe that more pressure should be exerted on the long-term unemployed. 51% think that a society in which everyone is taken care of is uh, uh, in which everyone is taken care of is not vi viable in the long term. These are the data from the shop floor, the workers. Yes, and you can see um, if you see this and the the the, the following chart. Um, it's the, the data from the work. From the from the shop floor, from the workplace, workers. Also, data. Oh, only ten minutes, so I have uh, I have to be fast. Yeah. Um, um, uh, data from the white color workers, and also data from the managers. 
and uh, the f 45 percent of the shop floor workers are higher than um, the results uh, from we get from the uh, white collar workers and the managers. Yes, and union density of the shop floor workers is more than 90 percent. I would say 99 percent in this company. Yes. <clears throat> Here we find a pronounced difference between East and West. Respondents from the East rejected social Darwinist notions much more strongly. Generally, however, what we found was that the workplace and the core workforce also function as sites of exclusive integration. The community of performance of productive employees is what generates the social status. Ultimately, those who are not part of this community, be it Hartz IV recipients or transfer-dependent Greeks, are not eligible for solidarity. Fourth finding, the fragmented uh, earners, wage earners consciousness manifests itself in various forms. A critique of capitalism may prompt conflicting orientations for action. On the basis of, of a cluster analysis, four different patterns of consciousness can be distinguished within uh, the studied car manufacturing plant, which again, again can be divided into two main clusters. We call these main clusters the critics, roughly 42%, uh, and the moderates, roughly uh, 58%. Starting from a markedly the atomic concept of society, the critics formulate a harsh critique of com contemporary capitalism addressing power imbal imbalances, the distributional injustice in particular. The moderates, uh, as a group, oscillate between a certainly less pronounced critique and a more or less affirmative view of society. What is clearly noticeable, noticeable is that so far, we have not been able to identify a cluster to which we could ascribe uh, those respondents who strongly defend contemporary capitalism's competition regime. The critics are divided into subgroups, the system critics and the competitive individuals. While the system critics develop an inclusive concept of society as a result of their social critique, Competitive individuals articulate a desire for dissociation that bears significant potential for exclusion. The other main cluster of moderates uh, is divided into subgroups of the competitive corporatists and the, affirmative, uh, the affirmatives. Competitive corporatists are in some aspects similar to the competitive individualists. However, despite a harsher critique of capitalism, the potential for exclusion, uh, which is far more visible uh, in the competitive in individualists, seems to be less pronounced in the competitive corporatists. Those workers belonging to the cluster of the affirmatives may also voice a strong critique in the same instances uh, on the whole, however, th their concept of society is markedly more positive and their critique not nearly as fundamental. If any of the respondents interrelate workplace consciousness and the concept of society, then these are the system critics. These respondents combine a critique of capitalism with an equally fierce criticism of working conditions in their own company. Not even 2% of the respondents disagree with the statement that the stress uh, and strains have, have significantly increased over the past years. Time pressure is part of daily life as is the sensation of being completely exhausted in uh, the evening or rather after work, whenever uh, that may be. System critics generally consider the system rules to be alterable, not least because they reckon with effective trade unions. Their critical view of society therefore tends uh, to motivate them to become involved in collective processes. Their critique primarily addresses 
the excess of financial finance capitalism, but also subordinated to that capitalism itself as a social system. This is quite different in uh, the comp comp competitive in individualists. They view society as a rigid system and have little faith in co-determination and trade unions. This group is mainly concerned about themselves. Their individualism, however, is not tied to hopes for upward uh, social mobility. The utilization of individual opportunities aims to preserving one's status. Uh, there actually is something worth defending and the only available and at the same time crucial resource is individual willingness to perform uh, and flexibil flexibility. Capitalism seems as a rigid competitive system the, perm the permanent tests of which must be passed individually. Correspondingly, involvement in collective processes does not figure prominently in their minds. Three minutes, okay. And solidarity is exclusive and competitive, that is to say, with a sharp distancing primarily from the button. Um, I have to cut some pieces. What do these findings mean for the relationships between wage earners, capitalism, and democracy? The first me message is quite comforting. In case of doubt, the good more or less secure firm always beats the bad, unjust society when it comes to devising action strategies. In this sense, special interest politics based on the competitive and thus always exclusive solidarity among the core, for, the core workforces of large companies could be seen as an adequate response to the new challenges. For those who have to pass the tests of production side competition, Standortkonkurrenz uh, in German, uh, again and again, it's difficult to transfer the dichotomic concept of society to the workplace community of productive performance. This does not exclude the possibility that secretly there may be a growing skepticism towards capitalism and maybe, maybe even towards democracy itself. Here lies a central problem of collective interest politics. If the critique of capitalism is diffused, for example, in trade unionist political approaches, the unjust society must seem as uh, uh, no more than the sum of practical constraints which one has to conform to exclusively as an individual. A negative competitive individualism aiming merely at successfully passing the tests represents an explosive potential for any organization and any political approach that ultimately depends on an autonomous definition of collective interest. Um, um, however, there is conclusion, uh, there is also a finding that su suggests, I need something which, which gives us hope, yes. Uh, uh, the first, the first uh, quotation of Rosa Luxemburg, yes. Um, however, there is a, also a finding that suggests um, an excessive momento, momentum uh, in the consciousness of wage, uh, 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 wage earners. The most important cognitive bridge between the Fragmented group specific experiences in the critique of a logic of escal is a is the critique of a logic of escalation of the always more and never enough, which many interviewed permanent employees indicate as the ultimate reason for various experiences of alienation and exploitation. One ins incisive experience is that even comprehensive rationalization measures are not suffi sufficient to bring the treadmill of permanent tests to, to a halt. As a rationalization measure is concluded, the company already announces the subsequent rationalization program. program. Once more, 
the company needs to improve its competitive position and once more this means that the work must be completed even more quickly and efficient, efficiently. However, this insatiability of competition is not only being felt in workplaces for the world of work as such, but uh, in the few of many respondents it has long begun to penetrate all the spheres of society and encroaching even on the lives of children and young people. Such, such observations depress many respondents much more than the daily pressure of rationalization at their workplace. For many respondents, society therefore seems to be become reduced to an endless set of contests which influence and form social life starting when people are very young. The principle of competition, which has become an end in itself is insatiable. It permanently produces winners and losers. It affects more or less all social spheres of experience. It, it is this principle of competition which its constant tests that in the opinion of most respondents reduces the quality of life beyond a bearable level. A large number of wage earners are Good uh, are a good uh, a large number of wage earners are a good deal ahead of their interest representations when it comes to a critique of the capitalist principle of competition and of a kind of economic growth that is both in, uh, ecological and socially destructive. This is a good reason to hope, as Rosa Luxemburg did, that this consciousness will come into conflict with a weak leadership whose main mistake is that it often has little or no confidence in the actors on the shop floor. In this respect, I believe there is still a lot to be learned from Rosa Luxemburg today, but the reality in the companies is that uh, trade unionists have to struggle against the spontaneous tendency of exclusive solidarity. Thank you very much. Thank you. Again, almost in time.